Okay. So once again, thank you and, and welcome to our first official meetup here. Um, my name is Bob Scott. I, I actually, I, I, I'm just going to go through my story here for the last year. Um, I've got some pictures up on the screen of basically the way I, I was not even a year ago. You can see in the top right corner that was taken February 8th of this year. That's uh, 2016, February 8th. Um, just a couple of weeks before I had the surgery, and I'm telling you, man, uh, I I just I look at these now and I can't even get over it. Um, but you know, when you're that size, you don't really have that many pictures of yourself. You kind of stay away from windows and <laughs> anything that has a reflection, mirrors and cameras and and everything else. Um, you know, I, I I remember it was kind of funny because you know there was one time that my weight did come in handy, um, which I'll I'll show you that now the. Uh, Basically, it was the the wonderful uh, trip to Vegas where we, um, you know, if you basically, if you're over 350 pounds, you can get yourself a free, um, a free meal, which was very exciting to me, the whole idea of that. So, you know, let's see if, can I make it, you know? And there it is, 361 pounds. Very excited. I'm a winner. I still can't believe it, um, but that's that's the way it was. You know, if you get 350 pounds, you can get yourself a free burger. Uh, this is kind of one of those lose uh, for winning type of situations, and and you know, it's it's an amazing thing to have people laughing at you, and um, you know how big you are. You don't need a scale to tell you, but a couple of drinks and and uh, you're just about to do anything. And, even though I didn't take that video, I'm happy somebody did because, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I can look back on now. Um, another one, you know, this was just a couple of weeks before the surgery. And to look at this picture here, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And people wonder why you think that there's no way to, uh, to see yourself any thinner. Well, when you're basically buying 4X and 54 waist and you don't even care if your fly's open and you don't shave anymore and your hats don't fit, it's pretty easy, you know, uh, especially when, um, you're trying to entertain your kids by blowing an egg out of a shell. And the funny thing is I can't even see the video for what it is. All I can see is my gut hanging over my pants. Uh, and basically just, this is who I was. I didn't think of myself as anything different or thought of myself as, as giving myself a, you know, a chance really. Um, I was just a big guy and I used it as a crutch for, for a long time over 25 years. And even when I did lose weight, a couple of years that I did lose weight, it didn't matter. Um, because I was, I was never doing it for myself. I was never doing it, uh, really for, uh, for anybody. I would just do it because I thought that that's what was supposed to happen. And you go on a diet and you, you basically what happens is you change your eating patterns. You change your life to something that you don't want it to be. And you do that for a certain amount of time. And then you stop doing that. You reward yourself for succeeding in a diet by getting off of the diet. Now, what this does is actually an absolute yo-yo effect and worse than if you'd never dieted before. Because it's one thing, and I'm sure you've all heard this, right? It's one thing to never have money. It's another thing to be rich and then lose it. Well, when you yo-yo in diets, you're constantly losing it. When you do lose a little bit of weight, you, when you struggle to lose that weight and people congratulate you and then a few months later you put it all back on, it's the worst feeling in the world. And it creates a, a mindset that you really just can't even control. Um, and this is where I was. And I had no intention on making a change, no intention at all, until this year happened. And my wife told me, yes, pregnant with the third child, a surprise and a half. But I knew I was tired. I'm only in my 30s and I'm beat up. I'm exhausted. My back hurts. Life was tough. I didn't really care about myself. I didn't care about caring about myself. But I knew I had a, a new baby coming and I had to get in shape. So my wife and I went to the doctor, started talking to the doctor. And, uh, this was the third time that I was going to try and actually um, do the surgery. Um, the first two times I, I quit in the middle. The first time I, I actually did three of the clearances. 
and then I quit. Second time, I did a few more of the clearances. But now, it's this third baby coming, my two boys, and finally, a little girl. I had to make a change. I would have never done it by myself. My wife was very supportive. She made the appointment for me. She uh, forced me to go to all of my, my doctor's appointments. My, my work was amazingly accommodating and let me, you know, put my health uh, ahead of what I was doing for them, which is very rare in this day and age. Um, my boss was very forgiving for me to go to these appointments, no matter when they were. Um, you know, I, of course, I'd get my work done, but it was more or less that, you know, everybody understood more than I did how important this was. And they were supportive of it. So February came. And it was time for me to actually get this done. I had, I had passed all of my clearances. Um, and I, I, had, I had passed all of my clearances. I was now at this time in my life where, um, you know, I was a little bit nervous. I mean, you know, I met with my doctor December 23rd. So two months to the day on February 23rd, it was surgery time. Between my work being nuts, a baby coming, and all of these clearances that I had to do to make this happen, I got to be honest, I had no idea what I was in for, and I didn't really care. Um, I just knew I had to do something. So you can see up in the top there, you know, February 23rd, 7 a.m., that's me right outside the doctor's office, uh, well, about to go in for surgery. I had my clearance papers on me. Um, that's, uh, that's the face below after the, uh, the nurse had missed the vein for the third time because my arms are so fat, and I'm telling you, I saw stars, but I did it. And I went for it, and yep, they took this 90% of my stomach out. Um, the very next day, I had the worst, worst buyer's remorse you'd ever imagine. I went from uh, starving myself trying to do this liquid diet to then them saying, hey, no, you know what? Uh, you can have a thimble of water and maybe uh, you know, a shot glass of, uh, of, of uh, beef uh, beef." broth if you'd like. Um, and, and that's about it. So, you know, it was, it was really amazing to, to be in this situation here, um, not knowing what I put myself into in a hospital bed, feeling awful. And, uh, the only thing that was going through my head is please be worth it and please work. Because even though I did all the clearances and I talked to the psychologist and I did all the crap you were supposed to do, I knew that I had at least a 50% chance of failing this. I've had people in my life that have gone through these things, including my mom. Uh, my mom had a bypass and she almost died. You know, uh, you know I, I've, I know a lot of people that have, that have had the surgeries and not been successful. So why was I going to be any different? I don't know. You know I, but I needed to do something, so I went for it. I had a, I had a conversation with um, a very, very dear friend of mine. Uh, it was about a month before the surgery. And this is someone that I really do admire. And, and uh, we were talking and, and he said to me, you know, I was telling him how, you know, after the surgery, the most I'm ever going to be able to have is a half a sandwich. And I was saying it very discouraged because I was like, man, a half a sandwich, like that's the most I'm going to have at a sitting. That sounds awful. I mean, I got so much comfort in eating so much food that the idea of just evening a half a sandwich was, was, was basically you're, you're knocking the wind out of me. You're taking everything I care about, taking it away from me. And, uh, and he said to me, as soon as I said this, wow, that's fantastic. I was taken back. I go, what do you mean it's fantastic? How can it be fantastic if I can only have half a sandwich? And then I realized how much of a problem I really had. Because this individual who's in good shape sees that as an amazing thing. If he only had to eat half a sandwich to fill himself up, his life, would be, that would be great. That's the mindset that I needed to get myself in. So I started really re-examining everything that, that was going on in my life. Um, I, start, I really needed to, to take a second and think about what was going on in, in my life that, that, I, I, uh, um, you know, that, I, that I should really be uh, working on. Um, so, you know what? I believe I kind of screwed up here. Um, yeah, so basically, let me just here. I'll show you a little little bit of fun of uh, of me here. The uh, 
big boy. Um, baby's coming. And here we are in February. So after making this, uh, this decision, the surgery had happened. I had to go with it. Um, now, March, I, I had my first weigh-in. I didn't see a difference at all. I was down 30 pounds. It really didn't matter. It was a week later, right? Um, and, uh, you know, March 4th, you take a picture. I, I, I was proud of myself of the fact that I had lost 30 pounds, but I hadn't done anything. It was just the fact that my body was basically eating my body, right? Um, I still didn't know if I had done the right thing. All I knew is that my body wasn't, I wasn't craving the crap that I had eaten for years and years and years. Um, and this was pretty amazing to me. It was pretty amazing, the idea of that, that I wasn't craving it. Uh, so it was, you know, it was, it was really, really cool. Um, I just want to pause for one sec because I, I feel like I was definitely in the wrong spot. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about how our system works here because I know a couple other people have joined since, since we've been doing this. Um, so just, just, to, just to go back real quick, if you guys, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. If you're seeing the March um, the March page that has a picture of my, my, my fatness there um, in March, just do me a favor and click the button that says raise your hand so that I can, I can just make sure everybody's seeing this is the right thing here. Okay, cool. Uh, the other thing is if you guys have any questions or anything that you want me to cover that I might've missed, all you got to do is hit the Q and A button. You can ask your question. It'll get to me and then I'll go through it right at the end. Again, I'm going to open this up. We can talk at the end. Uh, you know, we'll open. Everybody can become a panelist. We can all talk to each other. If you have your story, we can go through that as well. Um, we just had a bunch of people join. So let me just do uh, a real quick poll here. A poll just opened up. I'm just going to take a second break here and let you guys uh, please do, do me a favor. And, and if you could answer this poll, uh, that would be fantastic. It should be on your, uh, on your screen at this point. Just go ahead and. Uh, and do that for me if you don't mind. All right, cool. And if that gets in the way, you can just you can just kind of minimize it. All right. All right. So where were we? All right. So I lost I lost thirty pounds in March. I was feeling pretty good. Um, I knew that you know it was working. I guess. Um, but I, I still you know it, the amazing thing about being as big as I was is that you know thirty pounds doesn't mean anything. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, if you lost 30 pounds, that's like life changing, right? People are going to be like, wow, man, you look completely different. That's amazing how good you look. In my case, nobody said anything, nothing at all, until I was over 60 pounds down. Now, come April, uh, one, of, one of the most, uh, you know, one of the things that I really love doing is, is I coach uh, baseball, I coach Little League, and um, the season opens up. And uh, I got to tell you, you know, it was great. It's fantastic. It forces you to get out there. It forces you to exercise. And I love it. I'm a big kid. You know, um, I've always loved sports. Uh, I played as a kid. I always loved coaching. I, I, I ran a summer camp. Um, and this was an opportunity for me to bond with my son. I uh, met a lot of really great people. And I was looking forward to it. And it, was, it wasn't the first day of practice, but maybe the fifth or sixth. You know, a couple of people that I coached their kids the year before said, hey, are you doing something? Little did they know I was down 70 pounds at that point. Imagine losing 70 pounds and someone saying, are you doing something? How can you stay motivated? How can you actually find anything from within to keep you going when you've got to lose 70 pounds before anybody even notices? Well, that was the magic of the surgery because where any other diet in the world at 50 or 60 pounds, I probably would have given up because the strain would have been so tough and I would have been so hungry and there's no way I could have gone back. My life was just beginning with this. You see, the adjustment period, the rehab that your body does when you first do the surgery, that first two months, you're cleaning your system. You can't put crap in. You can't eat it. All right. It doesn't agree with you. You can't, you can't force it in. So it is a forced rehab, all right? They clean you out. Now the next step is you will adjust to your stomach and you, you can stretch it out. And you, can, you, can, you can become as big as you were, if not bigger. That's up to you, but not in the beginning. So the beautiful thing is that while I was losing weight, even though I wasn't very encouraged, I still didn't have a choice. I still was gonna lose weight no matter what. 
after April, May came and I started to actually see a big difference. Now, you know, it's funny, right? You look at these pictures here and it's not a huge difference at all to anybody but me, but I was down 90 pounds at this point, down 90 pounds. Now the scale was the big difference maker for me. Yeah. My clothes are too big now. That shirt that I'm wearing, that actual size, let me just go back so you guys can see that. Yep, there it is. Filled out in all its glory, you know, <laughs> right to the day of surgery. And there it is. You know, I kind of look like a balloon um, that's been deflated. But it's still not a big difference. So you have to stay motivated from within. But what was really cool was all of a sudden now, right, these little things like going up and down the stairs, waking up in the morning without my back killing it was starting to help, right? I was two, I was, I was, you know, I was 270, 275 pounds. Not like I was a skinny dude by any means. Actually, no, I was 290 at this point. But still, you know what? I was under 300. That was a big deal for me. I hadn't been under 300 in years. When I got married 15 years ago, I was 320. So this was a really big deal for me to, to actually get down to that. Um, and people were noticing again, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, you know, I'd tell them I did the surgery or I'd tell them I'm just dieting or eating better. Um, it wasn't all that noticeable yet, but it meant something to me. Then June came. The next 15 to 20 pounds made a huge difference. I started, I bought new clothes. I was a 4X t-shirt. Now I was a 2X. I was a 54 waist. Now I was a 44. And it felt great. Um, I, I started to now honestly recognize that I, I was worth it. I started not craving any of the crap I'd eaten before. At this point, I was, you know, I was five months removed from, from eating any bread um, or pasta. Uh, I had found the foods that were comfortable to me, like yogurts. Uh, I started making my soups, which I'll get into in a second. Um, and I found substitutes for just about everything in my life that, that, was a, that used to be a trigger food. And my head started to wrap around what was happening too. I needed to change. I needed to change what I was eating. And if I could do that and still enjoy my life, maybe I could get a hold of this. Well, what happened was I started to enjoy the food that I made. I was eating much, much more than anything I used to eat. Um, these pictures, so, so you're, you're, the top picture to the left, I am, that, I am a huge, huge fan now. Now let me see if I can annotate so I can, I can kind of point these things out spotlight yeah let's use this so uh this is in here oh what's going on here i don't know if it's gonna let me do it well uh, all right so the top left picture this is a meal that i make probably four or five times a week from for my wife and myself and what that is is those are zucchini noodles i i don't eat pasta anymore i have zucchini yeah, the, the spiralizer which 24 bucks on Amazon, it's amazing. Turn any vegetable into pasta. I do it with uh, zucchini and we have it with, we have it with everything. We have it instead of pasta um, and spaghetti sauce, whatever. Uh, I love it with a little bit of a ginger dressing um, with an ahi tuna, a little wasabi. That's what you see there with the sesame seeds. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's my favorite, favorite quick meal. I can make it in four minutes if I have the, the tuna. Um, you see the bottom right-hand side. That's what football Sunday looks like in my house now. I love the veggie straws, the jalapeno ones, which a good friend of mine brought over, and I got, I'm, I'm addicted to them, I'm telling you. Almonds. God, I could go through almonds. But the difference is I don't bring the bag out to the living room with me anymore. I grab a handful. I eat the handful. If I want another one, I get my ass up, walk to the kitchen, grab another handful. That's the way I do it because it stops the process. You know. It's, if it's just there, you just keep eating. And just because you know, my stomach had gotten trimmed out doesn't mean that now I can't eat almost as much as I could have. It's just it's retrained. So getting up in between grabbing a handful makes all the difference in the world. I do that for the, for, for the veggie straws. I do that for almonds. I leave it in the kitchen. Get up and walk out in. You know, it will change everything. And the ahi tuna, I got that recipe from a friend of mine. That is like unbelievably good. And yeah, you know what? Food costs a little bit more, but you eat less. And then the quality is so much better. That sucker in the middle, man, let me tell you. Thank goodness for whoever invented the hard seltzers. Now, I'm not, I'm not sitting here promoting drinking, but I like it. And, it, and it's a lot of fun for me. 
Um, and I, I didn't want to give that up. As a matter of fact, I probably took it up a little bit more. <laughs> but this, these hard seltzers, you know, 110 calories, only 10 calories are anything. The alcohol is 100 of them. They're delicious. They're all, they're gluten-free. They're, uh, they're natural. The sugar is sugar cane. So, you know, it's substituting the things that were in your life for these new things. And I'm telling you, given the choice now, I haven't had a beer in nine months. I don't plan on ever having one again. I, I would much rather prefer this. And I love them. And I love all the food that I eat now. On the top right, that is my patented fish soup. This, is, uh, this, this got me through a lot. I make a huge pot of this and it lasts me a good 10 days or so. I eat it in a, uh, a little coffee cup. And uh, you know that's, that's how I have my servings. I can tell you, I make a coffee cup of that, throw it in the microwave, three minutes. It's phenomenal. It's all vegetables with codfish. I, I, I cook it like crazy. I know it sounds horrible. That's fine. Everybody that's ever tried it says it's the best thing in the world. I, I spice it up like crazy with cayenne pepper, and, and, and it is delicious. It's also only 60 calories a cup with 15 grams of protein. It's ridiculous. And you know what? It's, it's about the adjustment. It's about finding what you enjoy in life and not giving it up, but making an adjustment so that it works for you. And that's what I was able to do. Um, July, July, I weighed in. Now I was down 125 pounds. I, I could see the difference. Everybody else could too. It was the summer. Uh, I was wearing all my, uh, all my, my fishing t-shirts and, you know, I had, I had, I had gone out and spent some money on, on a wardrobe and, uh, my clothes were getting big again, and it felt great. August. Well, August was, uh, was the moment I was kind of waiting for. I, I, I didn't do a weigh-in in August, but my daughter was born. Um, that's little Lily there. She was born on the 18th. And, you know, for the first time in my life, I was happy about being in pictures. It was an incredible, incredible feeling. And something that is so much more ingrained as valuable in my mind than, than any of the other things that I could have been doing. When you start weighing out the happiness that you get from feeding yourself, feeding your cravings with crap, to going into a place and people looking at you um, differently uh, and not, not feeling like everybody's staring at you like you're the biggest person in the room, well, if that is enough motivation, for anybody, but you have to get there. And that's the hard part, right? So February, March, April, May, June, July, August, six months, six months. It took me until all of a sudden my mindset completely changed. And now I was on a path for success, something that I wasn't going to change without the surgery though, without that tool getting me to that point, my mindset would have never changed. And I would have never been where I am today. And that's why I do believe that the, the surgery was a godsend. So September, September was a great month. I actually got myself back into performing thanks to some really great friends that, that gave me an opportunity to get back into it and people that are dear, dear friends and have been great influences on my life. Um, did some weddings. Uh, we did the duel of the decades, which was awesome. Um, this is, <laughs> this is a, a fun little clip that we, we were doing. This is a, you know, an eighties and a nineties band basically dueling it out. Um, I was, I was fortunate enough to help out with some of the scripting, but you know, a buddy of mine and these bands were phenomenal. Um, we had such a great time. I mean, geez, we sold this place out 1600 people screaming and going nuts. Um, it was just an incredible experience. Uh, and you know, for the first time again, I wasn't concerned about the way I looked on stage. It was not about that, which that's what it had been about my whole life. I had, to, I had to be a great singer because I had to get people past my appearance. I had to be a great actor so I could get past my appearance or use my appearance so that I could make a, a joke. And I did it very well. I can make fun of fat people better than anybody else in the world because I was one. I got a book of jokes, but I'm telling you, I'd never use one because as as uh, you know, as much as it was a crutch, it also was just an absolute, you know, handicap. Um, it's hard to understand what a person goes through unless you've been there. I've been there now. 
Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's cool because just in, in hearing from people in my past when I was a kid and, and everything, you know, I don't think everybody saw me as really heavy. I don't know if they did or not, but I always did. I look at pictures of myself when I was in great shape and I don't remember those moments because I just always had ingrained I was a fat kid. This is the first time in my life that I don't see myself as a fat kid. So then in October, October, I had the greatest experience that I could ever have which was getting on a plane and flying across the country without needing an extension, without the person next to me hating the fact that it was me. And uh, you know what? I, I, the, that moment gives me another year of inspiration. Um, I, was, I, was, you know, I went out to, to, the, to the home base company in California um, and you'll see there the out, the in and out burger. It was like, I, it was like, I had to do it. You know, I hadn't eaten, I had not eaten a cheeseburger or anything like that in honestly, like since, Oh, let's see. They put me on that diet in uh, January. So yeah, the whole year. All right. So we're talking about almost 10 months. I hadn't had a burger, but we got to go in and out. Well, they've got this really cool thing out there where it's protein style or, or uh, animal style. One of these protein style things, what it, they wrap it in lettuce. What a great idea. What a great idea. So you know what? I couldn't eat the whole burger. I had a couple bites, so it was delicious, and it was enough. And I felt good because it was wrapped in lettuce. Another, just a, a way to supplement what you're already doing and make it better. And I stole that idea. As a matter of fact, just last week, I went out to a restaurant, and I wanted, they had a guacamole dip. So they have a guacamole. They serve it with chips. Well, you know you just got to ask. I asked the waiter, I said, listen, do you guys have any romaine in the back that you could just bring out a couple leaves? I cut it up. That's what I use as chips. I do that at home with salsa. I do that with bruschetta. I do that with anything because you know what? It's better for you and it still works. As a matter of fact, it tastes better. You can make chicken wraps. You can make so many things and use lettuce instead of bread. Um, and that all came from just going out to California and these guys, which, you know, great friends of mine saying, Hey, let's get this. And uh, hey, you can get it with lettuce. And I did. And, and it was amazing. Uh, I felt good about the way I was looking. I was wearing clothes that, that I'd never thought in a million years would fit ever. Um, I went shopping. I think it was a few days before I went shopping. I spent a couple hundred bucks at stores like Calvin Klein. Um, and you know what? Those, those moments, once again, more, more time that I, I feel inspired more time that I'll never be looking back on that crap food um, with that. And it was a great, great experience. I, I, uh, I had to take a picture of myself in the plane because I could actually do it. I actually crossed my legs in the plane sitting, which was amazing. I got work done. Do you know, I didn't know if maybe you knew this, but do you know that those, those lap trays in the planes actually do go down to where your lap is? See, I didn't know this. I thought that that was basically a bib that you would wear to allow you know, the crap from your face not to drop on your shirt. Because when you're as big as I was and you're sitting in a plane and you drop that thing down, you never see it at a 90 degree angle, ever, never. It's always resting on you and there is no space. You know what else you never do in a plane when you're that size? You never move, you never get up, you never go to the bathroom because you're just too damn embarrassed. And you need to basically have an entire plane move so that you can do it. See, here's the hardest part about being huge, all right? The hardest part about being a big person is that you have to compensate the best you can so that you can get through the day. You have to. You have to mentally be ready for whatever's going to happen. And you, you try to psych yourself up and say, this is all in my head. But it's not. When you get in a plane and you have a single seat and you're walking down the aisle, you're about to ruin somebody's day. You know it and they know it. And no matter how much you don't want to do it, it's going to happen. Now, maybe if you're loaded and you want to buy two seats and you can do that, yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I got it. I would try to update, you know, upgrade as much as I could. I would try to upgrade to a bigger seat as much as I possibly could. Unfortunately, you know, I have great friends that I worked with. And when we would fly for work, I would be able to, you know, most of the time they, we would be sitting together. But I mean, I would rather have jumped out of a plane without a parachute and just hope that maybe I would bounce off of my fat and live than to go through some of the experiences that I had to fly. 
So for the first time being able to get on a plane and not feel that way, it was amazing. And I was able to sit down and, and meet with friends that, uh, you know, it, I can't, I'll never forget those moments. And the best part is that those horrible moments that happened to me in years past because of my size, they're starting to disappear. Those ones are starting to go away. I don't see myself that big guy anymore as much. The shadow is still there constantly, but my thought process is starting to disappear and I'm starting to see myself as smaller. And, you know, it's an amazing thing. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, California was great and, and I wasn't sweating. That was the amazing thing. I, I used to sweat like a pig. So November came. November, now I was, now I saw a big old difference. You know, I was down, I was at 209 pounds. This was like, you know, I, I, once again, I started at 381. I never thought I was going to get down here. I have never kept a goal weight. My goal weight was to be under 250. Okay. That, that was my goal weight. You know, I mean, I'd never been under 250. I figured, Hey, if I get down there, that, that would be amazing. But, but once again, because I'm not dieting, I'm just living. And eating the things that now my body craves, I have no idea where I'm going to end up. I don't care. I, I, I don't care at all. I feel good about the way I look now. I feel good about the way I looked then. I feel good about the way I looked then when I was 219. You know, at 219, I think I look great. A little did I know, I could actually lose another 20 pounds. This is my Thanksgiving picture of my family. It's the only picture that I have in my family that I actually love. You know how horrible that is? It's horrible to be married 16 years and only have about four pictures of your family and only one that you can actually stand looking at. I got a beautiful family. I owed them this. I owed my wife this. I owed my kids this. I owed my boss this. And I owed myself this. But you can't realize that when you start this. It's almost impossible. But once you're in it, you start to realize what's going on. And it's, it's really an amazing thing. It's an amazing gift that you can give yourself and that you can give uh, the ones around you that, that love you and care about you. Um, and, it, you know, it's been a fantastic journey. So, yeah, December, just yesterday. Yesterday was a huge, huge day for me because uh, – I mean, like I said, I, I wouldn't care if my body had stopped at 225 or 250. I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have cared at all. I don't know if I'm done. I mean, this is the fun part about this. I mean, I'm more than happy at this point. I got on the scale. I saw 299. I, I literally jumped up and I moved the scale to a different place on the floor. I did all the tricks to make sure that this was for real. Um, I don't weigh myself every day, but man, to see that was unbelievable for a guy uh, that's gone through what I've gone through. Um, so I had to snap a shot and, you know, it's, it's, it's really been a heck of a journey, but the best thing is that the things that are important to me now are the things that are not going to change. I'm not in a diet, even for my head, my mind's not in a diet. My mind's not, and people say it's a lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle. This is living. Living is taking care of yourself. Living is going on rides with your kids. Living is being able to work all day, coach all night, and still have energy left to hang out with your wife. That's living. Until you get to that point, you're not living. You're just dying. And I've been dying for 25 years. And now I get to take my life back. And the things that are important to me again are starting to blossom through. I'm enjoying performing again. I'm enjoying uh, working again. I'm enjoying the things that actually make life worth it. And, you know, listen, it doesn't hurt that I'm not embarrassed about the way I look. You know, I, that doesn't hurt either. Um, I feel, I feel great. I feel, I feel fantastic about, you know, everything that's, that's happened so far with, with me and my life. And um, I feel like I have a lot of, a, a lot of insight in, to share with people that are going through this, um, this journey that are thinking about going through this journey because you know what? I'm a three time. No, I'm a two time dropout. Third time I stayed through only because I was supported and pushed without that. There's no way I would have, I guarantee it because you know what, when you get to a point where you don't feel good about yourself, 
um, you've already quit. You've already quit to get to that weight, right? I mean, at 300, I was overweight. At 320, I was still really big. At 350, I was huge. How do I get to 380? Because I quit. I quit at 320. And then I quit at 350. I had already quit and given up on my life at 360, 70, 80. I didn't care. But you have to care. And this, uh, this amazing surgery, for those of you who, who don't know about it, Okay, but what it does is it takes away the craving, gets rid of the enzyme in your stomach that gives you cravings. It starts you off with a baby belly. It retrains you. It 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 is it is not a it's not a magical switch that fixes you. That's not what it is. But what it is is it's a reset button. And I don't know about all you guys, but in your life, how many things in your life would you just like to have a reset button? Do it all over again. I mean Geez, there's a lot in my life I'd like to. It's not that I want to take away from the experience that I've had because I've learned a tremendous amount from all the experiences I've had. But wouldn't it be nice to take that experience and then hit a reset button and try it again? That's what this surgery did for me. I, I, I know I'm successful now, not, not because, you know, um, not because of this surgery uh, per se, but because of the, the, what I learned along the way uh, from it, you know, it reset me. I have put in nine months of work, 10 months of work now, and, and uh, I feel great about the way I am. And anytime I walk past something, some crap or, yeah, could I have a slice of pizza? Sure, I could have a slice of pizza. But why? I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand, you know, the mentality of a lot of people that go through this, uh, this, this journey and then end up on the wrong side of things. Um, I've always, I, I, my, 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 my mind, um, my mind has, has gone with the, uh, the whole idea of that. We, uh, basically the way that the way that it is, you know, I have, I, I I'm an addict. Okay. I'm a foodie. Um, food gave me comfort. Whenever I was stressed, I would eat food. Whenever it was nighttime and I would sit down to watch TV, watching a show was not good enough unless I was eating food, eating crap. Not, not just food, but garbage. And I would eat it until I was stuffed. And then I'd eat a little bit more because that was the feeling that made me happy. That was the feeling that would let me go to bed. It was that full, full feeling. Um, I was an addict. I am an addict. It's not going to ever go away. Um, so just like an alcoholic or a drug addict, why would I now work to be a social drinker and once in a while have a piece of pizza or once in a while have a, you know, a big old loaf of bread? I, I, don't, I don't ever want to do that. I don't ever want to open Pandora's box to find out what might happen because you know what? I have tons of reminders of what could happen. Tons. You know? I mean, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just go through them again, because this is me now, and this is not even a year ago. That's enough for me, and I hope it's enough for you guys, um, because there is a better world out there. The world is much better for those that are not that size much much better people are much nicer things are a lot easier the world is easier it's not fair it's not right but it's the way it is um you know it's really funny because i, I made a post yesterday on facebook which is the first time that i've come out and actually said what was going on i mean a lot of people thought i was sick with the weight loss a lot of people thought i had moved they didn't know who i was i shaved so i looked different and uh, a lot of people didn't even know what was going on and, and i felt I felt that I needed to put a post out there. And I've had a lot of people from all walks of my life from when I was younger and um, comment and say a lot of nice things. And, and one person actually said, um, and I'm going to misquote it, uh, but they had a great quote and it was about, you know, it's, I'm going to paraphrase it completely, but it was very, it was very important uh, what they said. It was, you know, it's, it's important to be nice. It's, it's important to be kind and kind of not, 
not to not to be nasty, not to put people down, because you know what, um, words uh, they they do they do mean a lot, and you don't know the impact of something that you're going to say to someone. Um, I was really lucky to work at a camp for ten years, and bullying was the number one thing that I could stamp out. Um, and and I do feel very very strongly about that because, you know, I always saw myself as a fat kid. I know it was because everybody called me the fat kid. Didn't matter. Didn't matter if I was or not. But if someone ingrains something in your head, sooner or later, that's what you are. And that works both ways. So now I'm a success. Now I'm skinny, damn good looking, feel good about myself. And I can ingrain that in my mind. I don't need to eat crap anymore. I don't need it. I feel better when I'm eating healthier. Um, I got my blood work done the other day. It was ridiculously good. And I put it up on the fridge like it was a report card. You know, it's, it's good to feel good about yourself. It makes life a lot easier. So if you guys are thinking about getting involved in this, doing this journey, going down this path, I've got a lot of insight. I've got a lot of things I can share with you. But the one thing I'll tell you is just go do it. Tomorrow, call the doctor, start your tests. You've got a bunch of roads ahead of you. Knock them all out. They put those detours in the way to make sure that you've got what it takes. You do. You have what it takes. Look at me. It's 381 pounds. Actually, that, that picture is good, but you know, what, you know which one I like even better? Oh, yeah. Let's just look at this one again because this, this, this is a beaut. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that fat guy. Happy. Yeah, 360 pounds in front of people that you don't know in Vegas. A whole bunch of people laughing at you. There you go, fatty. Feel good about yourself? No, you don't. You don't. So uh, thank you for, 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 uh, for joining me. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about all of you. Um, does anybody, anybody have anything that they want to say? If you do, let me know, and I, will, uh, I can promote you to a panelist. Now? That's it? You just wanted to hear my story? That's it? That's all you got? Ay, ay, ay. Well, that's cool. Hey, listen, that worked for me. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, we are going to do live meetings. Um, I'm also going to, I'm, I'm really proud that I've been asked to